Hey guys, Frightener22 here, and this is Saturday Night Movie Drive-In. Now that Thanksgiving is uh, behind us and Mother Nature is turning into a real bitch and putting the cold on, I figured what better way to warm up our spirits and get us into a better mood dealing with this winter weather than a good old 80s sex comedy. So tonight we're going to be taking a look at 1984's Where the Boys Are, 84. Now this film um, was released independently back in obviously 1984, and it is is a remake of the 1960 teen sex comedy. Now, in this film, it basically follows the same basic plot line of the original, uh, only updating it for uh, the 80s time frame, and it deals with four college girls going on their spring break to let loose in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. And the four girls in this um, are... Uh, four characters. One of them is Carol, and she's going on the separate vacation. She's a um, early on in the film, you learn that her and her boyfriend are taking separate vacations, which was basically um, initiated by her just so that they could, um, you know, have some separate time from each other since they've been together for so many years. She just kind of wants some time away from him. Um, the next girl is Jenny, and uh, once she hits Fort Lauderdale, she's courted by um, a classical pianist who is her idol, who is actually um, a cousin of one of the other girls in her group, and in addition to being courted by this classical pianist who's her idol, she's also um, courted by a guy um, that they pick up hitchhiking, who's just a, you know, a pretty average, nice guy, but he's in a rock band. Um, the next girl is Sandra, who's a really... Um, rich and sometimes uptight girl, but she's really just been on the prowl for Mr. Right, and this is what she's uh, basically doing in Fort Lauderdale. And finally, you have Lori, who's basically, you know, um, the group's slut of um, the whole group, and she's basically in Fort Lauderdale just dreaming of a night of passion with a real macho He-Man um, type of guy. So that's the basic plot line of this, and uh, the one thing that I really have to commend this film for is that dealing with four characters, um, you know, it obviously follows, you know, the basic principle that most 80s sex comedies were going with, um, on, you know, going for at the time, but the thing that really surprised me about this is that how all four of, um, the central characters of this film really get, you know, a lot of time to shine, um, in their own right, you know, they really take time to really flesh out, and, you know, although it's, um, wacky and hokey and all for, you know, comedic purposes, you really get to spend a lot of individual time in the film with each of the four girls, so I really liked that a lot, um, this film, after I had finished watching it, as much as it is, um, a remake of a film that previously existed, I couldn't help but compare it to another, um, one of my favorite sex comedies, Spring Break, which I actually reviewed, um, in Saturday Night Movie Drive and previously, but only in this one, instead of um, it being four guys kind of letting loose in Florida, it's four girls this time. I mean, it's even the same state that they're partying in. And, um, you know, it's just basically a lot of, um, you know, if you're a lover of 80s sex comedies, it's basically cliched images. But it's the stuff that we come to love in 80s sex comedies and more or less the reason that we watch it. You know, beer, um, you know, just tons of booze, righteous babes, and some really kick-ass 80s pop rock and 80s synth rock. I mean, there's really not much that you can ask for in that. Some really, really memorable scenes in this film that I really liked were um, where two of the characters actually end up in jail for uh, drunken driving. It's it's crazy to see how the world has changed so much, how, you know, drinking and driving and damaging, pro uh, you know, um, you know, public property was just kind of a slap on the wrist and they just have to spend time in jail until they're, you know, literally bailed out by their friends. So um, the other two friends that are remaining along with... Um, the guy who's actually played by Russell Todd, who's actually been in a slew of other genre films such as Killer Clowns from Outer Space. All three of them need to band together to try and come up with the bail money for their friends, and um, they pretty much select Carol to uh, join a hot bod contest where her and another guy need to just dance really, really sexy for a whole crowd of, you know, drunk kids, and they all get um, judged and voted to win a cash prize. So that scene is uh, really, really cool. I really enjoyed that. Another really cool memorable scene is where, um, you know, the classical pianist invites uh, Jenny to um, him and his mother's house for, you know, a really uptight, yuppity shindig. And uh, the character that Russell Todd plays um, basically doesn't, you know, kind of has it in for the classical pianist because he's jealous of him. So he pretty much um, develops a way that basically, you know, 
tells every you know local college kid in the whole Fort Lauderdale area that there's a huge party going on at this big you know uh, you know yuppity uh, you know hipster mansion. So everybody on like boats and jet skis and everything just flocks to this party and just causes a complete like chaotic mess. It's really cool. Um, another interesting thing to note in this is that as much as that this is a film that's you know spearheaded by an ensemble cast of females, and of course in the tradition of 80s sex comedies were thinking babes rock and roll and nudity and that's one aspect of the film that it's a little lighter on compared to most other 80s sex comedies there's certainly boobs and there's nudity but it's way way more tamed down i mean there's really i mean off the top of my head i can only really think of two instances where you get a few you know flashes of nudity so on the nudity meter it's a little lower than most of your average sex comedies but it's still there for all you you know sex comedy purists so don't fret too much about that um Interesting to note about this film is that this was produced independently and it was released on April 6th, 1984, and it was both a box office and critical flop, and it only earned um, $3.6 million in its opening weekend and an overall grossing of $10.3 million. Now, that is pretty damn low, so I was actually kind of surprised on how bad it was. They even, you know, through my research, I found out that not only was you know, it, it a, a major flop, but it was also one of the worst reviewed movies of the entire year. And I mean, obviously you're not going into a film like this for Academy Award winning acting and stuff like that. And, you know, you kind of come to expect, especially in the films that I enjoy, you know, critics, if you take the time or even care to see what critics had to say about the movies that you love, you know, they shit on them a lot. But I was surprised that, you know, the box office was so brutal on this film because April 6th, that's like prime spring break time. And I figured a film like this would capture at least, you know, the youth of that generation to want to see it. So through my research, I kind of wanted to find out why, you know, if maybe there was just a lot of shit coming out on, um, on April 6th, uh, in that year that may have, you know, combated it and killed, uh, where the boys are 84's box office, but the only thing that I could really find, surprisingly, was that same day, um, the only, uh, other title that stood out in, um, you know, in my mind was Up the Creek, which was uh, um, an, another teen sex comedy that basically um, gets, you know, most of the cast from Animal House and it's about, like, whitewater rafting. That's a really good film, too, that I would like to review eventually. But, um, yeah, I just couldn't really put my finger on it. Although I did realize that a week later, Friday the 13th Part 4, uh, the final chapter, came out. But I still just can't really put my finger on why Where the Boys Are... 84 did so bad when it was uh, debuted um, originally in theaters. I mean, I guess maybe shitty marketing or, you know, just maybe uh, plenty of people were just at Fort Lauderdale partying it up themselves. I don't really know. But, um, you know, overall, this is a really, really fun film. And like I had mentioned before, you also have the likes of Russell Todd who from Killer Class from Outer Space. But another familiar face that um, you will find, and this is actually uh, Christopher McDonald, um, that name might not sound familiar from you, but he's actually Shooter McGavin from Happy Gilmore. So it's really funny to see a guy, an actor like um, Christopher McDonald, who so many people just, you know... Um, you know, come, you know, just pretty much think of Shooter McGavin when they think of him, which was a film that came out in 96. So it's, you know, funny to see him in like an 80s sex comedy when he's like my age and he's like doing, you know, partying and drinking and, you know, getting it on with chicks and stuff because that's so not what, you know, you've come to know from Shooter McGavin. So that's another cool, interesting, um, interesting little thing. Um, this film has actually been long out of print on uh, the key video VHS release, but luckily the copy that I'm watching is from my good friends over at VHSPS.com, so if you guys just, you know, really can't resist and want to check out um, this really, really cool, underrated, and practically forgotten sex comedy, check out my friends over at VHSPS.com for a really great um, VHS transfer on um, Burn DVD. But for all you guys that are wondering um, is this film ever going to be released on a legitimate DVD and you just don't want to wait around and, you know, pick up a bootleg? I have actually personally been in contact with Scorpion Releasing, who recently just put out um, the DVD of Zombie Nightmare, and they are, um, you know, through um, my transactions and my, uh, my communication with them, they actually did tell me that they are going to be releasing for the first time ever, Where the Boys Are 84 um, in February. I had contacted them about this last year because I saw 
saw on their website that the poster for the film um, was one of their upcoming projects. So I emailed them, you know, wondering what a you know a release date time frame would be, and uh, they said February, and they're actually in the process of obtaining um, interviews with uh, some of the cast members. So that's a really cool uh, DVD release to look forward to. So I mean, as far as I know, as far as I know, it's um, still supposed to hit. Um, you know, store shelves this February, so, you know, be sure to keep an eye out for that, but overall, this is a really fun, um, 80s sex comedy, like I said, little light on the nudity, but really fun, um, on hysterics, and a really cool story, I mean, it's got all, you know, the great, you know, things, you got partying, you know, kids doing just ridiculous things, awesome synth pop, 80s rock, and just righteous babes all around, so, you know, if you're in the mood for an 80s sex comedy, one that's, um, more or less forgotten, dig this one out and, uh, give it a try. That's all I got for you guys this week. Thanks again for tuning in to Saturday Night Movie Drive-In, and I'll catch you next time. This has been Frightener 22.